Good morning. Welcome in the name of the Lord. A number of announcements as we get started. You may notice that as you are looking in your bulletin, there is an insert in there. Um, I think it's about Youth for Christ Peaches. And here's the thing. We love to support things like Youth for Christ. But if you, there's actually a way in which you can either call or go online and order peaches if you want to. That would be lovely if we didn't have to be the middleman. So anyway, um, that's in there for you for, for your enjoyment for that. Um, a number of other things. Um, this coming week, um, I'm not sure whether you noticed or not, there's a couple of decorations out in the gathering area. Vacation Bible School is going to be starting, and so um, please um, pray for the teachers. Please pray for the young people that we have there. We're looking forward to a, to a wonderful, wonderful week on that. Um, speaking of Vacation Bible School, um, the Vacation Bible School is going to be sponsoring a child from um, Guatemala, I think is where that is. And um, that's kind of what that lemonade stand thing is out there all about. And so um, be thinking about that with us too. Um, let's see, lastly, uh, this is the announcement that my wife is very, very, very excited about. Uh, at the end of Vacation Bible School, some kids are going to be cutting my beard off. So, anyway, um, other announcements that we have for you. Um, if you have not turned in your time and talent sheets, um, we've given you a number of opportunities to do that, but there's still some that are in the back of the church. Um, we would really, really, really like to get those in if we could. So, um, if you wanted to um, pick one of those up from one of the ushers, that would be lovely and we would appreciate that very much. Summer Sunday School begins today, and other announcements, I believe, can be found. Am I missing anything, Ann? No, just thank them for all the toilet paper rolls. Oh, thank you for all the toilet paper rolls. There we go. Anyway, I'm not even going to make a comment about that. All right, will the congregation please rise? Peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share that peace with those who are gathered here today. If you are connected with Vacation Bible School this week, if you're going to be helping, I'm going to ask that you would come forward. Otherwise, would you please be seated? We're going to have a little installation service. These individuals have come forward um, and volunteered to be a part of our Vacation Bible School program. Our Lord, who came among us as a servant, calls us to a life of faith and a life of loving service to our neighbor. You stand among us as people who felt the call um, to serve as God has inspired you through love and good works. St. Paul writes, just as each of our bodies has several parts and each part has a separate function, so all of us, in union with Christ, form one body. And as parts of it, we belong to each other. Although our gifts differ according to the grace given to us. So if your gift is prophecy, use it as your faith suggests. If administration, use it for administering. If teaching, use it for teaching. Let the preachers give the sermons. That's what it says. The almsgivers give freely and the officials be diligent in doing works of mercy. Peter writes, but above all, hold unfailing love for one another because love will cover a multitude of sins. Will you assume this vacation Bible school ministry in the confidence that it comes from God? If so, answer, I will. Will you be diligent in your own use of the Holy Scriptures, faithful in your own use of the means of grace and prayer? If so, answer, I will. And will you trust in God's care 
seeking to grow in love for those you serve. Strive for excellence in your skills and adorn the gospel of God with a godly life. If so, answer, I will. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and the compassion to perform them. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for young people, for the opportunity to be able to share the gospel. We give thanks this day for the Ministry of Vacation Bible School and for the volunteers that come forward. And you ask that we ask that you would bless this week in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I declare you installed. <laughs> <laughs> the congregation may stand again as we continue with the order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The opening hymn is hymn number 614.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy host, and for all who offer them their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God, power and riches and wisdom and strength. powerful God, in Jesus Christ you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. And he said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. 
Here ends the first reading. The psalm reading is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O, God, o Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word of hope, my soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Here ends the psalm. And the second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, ch chapter 4, verses 13 through chapter 5, verse 1. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus, and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Here ends the second reading. Please stand for the gospel. The gospel reading for us this morning is taken from the gospel according to Matthew, the seventh chapter, beginning with the first verse. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, Do not judge, so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged, and the measure that you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your eye while the log is still in your own eye? You hypocrite, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. Congregation may remain standing. The hymn is number 801.
be seated. And if there's any children out there, which I do see a few, come on up and see my cookie jar today. morning everyone come sit down by my cookie jar do you like it is it kind of cool yeah so come on over chase you can come see it too so can you tell me what this cookie jar is shaped like what is this a boat and this boat has some animals in it, doesn't it? So guess what? The sermon today has nothing to do with Noah's Ark. I just happen to like this cookie jar because what the sermon has to do with today is Adam and Eve. So I want to talk to you a little bit. Adam and Eve were the first man and woman on earth. Earlier I read about them. And they were told by God to not eat of one tree, the tree of knowledge, in the Garden of Eden. And so that's kind of like saying, don't take the cookie from the cookie jar. Do you think there's cookies in here? You don't think so? Do you think there's cookies? Oh, let's check. So we're so curious, aren't we? That's how Adam and Eve were. They were like, oh, look at that really good apple up there. I want to eat it. And so we were looking in the cookie jar. And what do you think we have? Cookies. But guess what? God said, do not eat the cookies. In other words, do not eat the apple on the tree. And Adam and Eve were so tempted to eat the apple on the tree, just like we're tempted to eat the cookies in the cookie jar. That's how they felt. They were like, oh, I know those are going to taste so good, and I'm going to sneak up there and get one. But God said no. He said, do not eat of that tree. You can eat of any tree in the garden. You can have pears and peaches and cherries, but you can't have apples up there if that's what they were. Who knows? We know it was possibly a fruit. Just like we can't eat the cookies from the cookie jar. So do you think I'm going to let you have a cookie today? <laughs> Guess what? I am not going to let you have a cookie from the cookie jar, but I might let you have something else, just like God said, eat anywhere else in the garden, but not from the tree of knowledge. But I wanted you to feel inside today that temptation of wanting to have something you cannot have and you should not have, but then I'm going to give you the feeling of doing what God would want. So Sawyer, would you go up on my chair and get that basket? <laughs> okay, so now I'm not God, but I'm Ann. So we're going to pretend it would be the same as God saying, you can have a sucker. Hooray! The sucker's a bar back against my... No, I'm kidding. I think we can have a little sucker today. Against my better judgment. Always come up for the sermon, not the sucker. Okay? <laughs> but God is saying yes to the suckers. No to the cookies. We do what God says. Okay? Even if we're tempted not to. We do what God says. Have a sucker and thanks. Let's have a little prayer first. Dear Lord... Thank you for bringing us up here today as we learn about your word and what you tell us to do and to not do. Help us to do what you want us to do. Amen. Okay, now you can pick one. Good thing you came up to learn about what you can and can't do. 
Plus, those cookies have been in my cupboard for a long time, so. <laughs> this will be better. Everybody got one? Okay. See, I was thinking maybe we could go ahead and have a cookie because God was watching the apples. He always has to top me, you know. He always has a good one. You're so funny. <laughs> Stay out of the cookie jar. All right, so let's get started. To begin with, I want you guys to take one of your hands. Take one of your hands. All right, show it to me. Thank you. You guys are good at following directions. That's excellent. Uh, now, here's what I want. I want you to take your hand and I want you to ball it off. I want you to make it into a fist. All right. Now, after you got done with that, now I want you to go ahead and extend one finger, the index finger. There you go. Now, that kind of gets you into a pointing position, right? So what I want you to do is not, not, no, not yet. Um, here's, so what happens, here's what I want you to do first. I want you to point up or out or around or somewhere like that. There you go. That, I want you to kind of remember that idea that you're pointing here to the ceiling or you're pointing at God or you're pointing at maybe nothing in particular in the room. What's important at this moment is that you're not pointing at somebody else or you're not pointing at yourself. So that's number one. Got that? All right, let's try this again. Hand in a fist. Pointer finger out. This time, I want you to point at somebody else. Pick a person, point at somebody else. I know, I know, I know people tell us that it's rude to point at other people, but I am giving you permission right now so that you can point at other people. Point at somebody else. Don't think about the fact that four other fingers are pointing back at you. Point at somebody else. That's number two. You got that? So we have number one and number two. Last time, hand in a fist and your pointer finger out. And this time, I want you to point at yourself. Point at your heart, point at your head. You can thump your chest, pointing at you, any one of those ways. That's number three, and third time's a charm, but we're gonna get back to that. You guys ready? So here we go. Thank you, you guys follow directions really well. So in the book of Genesis. The Lord God had told Adam and Eve that they could eat of any tree in the garden, as Anne was talking about in the children's sermon, except for the one that was in the middle of the garden, the tree of life, or sometimes it's called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But then there's that whole incident that takes place with the snake and Adam and Eve, and they eat... That, that actually brings us to the text that we have for today. The Lord God is walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. Isn't that a lovely time of day? I mean, especially when it starts to get hot. The evening breeze kind of comes through, makes everything feel cool. It's wonderful. It's lovely that's going on. Um, the problem is, is that it wasn't lovely this day for Adam and Eve because they knew that what they had done. So when the Lord God comes walking through the garden at the time, of the evening breeze. Instead of enjoying the breeze, they hid. God doesn't see them right away, and so God calls out for them, and they tell God that, that they hid themselves, and God asks why, and they say it's because they knew that they were naked. Read that as that they knew that they were exposed. They knew that they were laid bare. That others could see what their shame was of what they had done. So they hide. God asks them, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree, of the fruit of the tree of which I told you not to eat, the one called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And Adam says, I love this answer, It was that woman that you, it was that woman that you gave me. So you can go ahead and you can point up in the air again, point to heaven, point to God. It's his fault. It is not ours. 
It was that woman that you, 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 God, gave me. It was your fault, God. That's at least part of the implication here. The idea here is, God, if you wouldn't have, then I wouldn't have. Eve isn't any better. When God asks her, she said it was that snake, so you can go ahead and point around. All of those snakes that are out there, all of those slimy, scaly things that are out there in our lives wanting to deliver temptation towards us. Anything that we can point at so that we don't have to take personal responsibility ourselves. That's number one. The gospel lesson for today was taken from Matthew chapter 7. Jesus is teaching, and he says, Do not judge, and you will not be judged. For the measure that you give will be the measure that you get. The idea here is likely that you are going to get back what you give out. But that's not the part of the text I want to concentrate on. Instead, the part that I want to talk about is the part about specks and logs and eyes. It might be interesting to think about this stuff in terms of perspective here. You know, the closer you are to something, the larger it looks, and the farther you are away from something, the smaller it appears, apparently unless it's in like your rearview mirror of your car. But the idea here would be that um, your own sin wouldn't actually be that big, but because it's so close to you, it feels like a log. Somebody else is, is out there. Um, but I think that that's actually not right. Let's not think of it in terms of perspective because that would rule, ruin the whole sense of hyperbole that I think that Jesus was trying to establish with this. Especially when Jesus says, you hypocrite. After pointing out that somehow it's easier, somehow it's more comfortable to think about specks that are in our neighbor's eyes than it is to deal with the logs that are in our own. So, if the first one with Adam and Eve was pointing up at God or out around at other things, on this one here, if we are able to ignore logs in our own eyes so that we are able to concentrate on specks in each other's, that's where you point at the other person. That's number two. But let's see if we can bring this home. Michael Jackson had a song out quite some time ago, but it's okay because we're doing like an 80s theme for the Vacation Bible School stuff, so I'm okay for mentioning or utilizing those, right? Okay, there we go. Got permission. Michael Jackson had a song out quite a while ago that was entitled... I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Didn't like everything about Michael, but on this one I think he's solid. Or let's see if we could illustrate this in different ways. What do you think God would have done with Adam and Eve if in the garden, instead of trying to hide and trying to blame other people, they would have come clean? all speculation, I guess, but I can tell you that I'm a parent. God's a parent. God, our Father. I'm a parent. Things always went better for my kids when they came clean. I was a kid. I had parents. Things always went better for me when I came clean. Maybe if they would have started with the man in the mirror. I'm going to take a look at Jesus' words in Matthew 7. When he's talking about that whole specks and logs and eyes thing, he ends by saying, first, take the log out of your own eye. That's confession. And without it, sin is obstructing your view, so you won't be able to help your neighbor see more clearly anyway and getting the speck out of their eye because the log is too large in your own. That was number three. I told you the third time's the charm, right? 
here's why. I don't find it very charming for people to go around in life blaming God or blaming all of the rest of the snakes that surround them for everything that goes wrong and never taking responsibility for themselves. That's number one. And I don't think it's very charming when I see people who are going around looking at specks in everybody else's eye and pointing the finger at them. That's number two. But I think that it is charming. I think it is endearing. I think it's humbling to see somebody make a confession. I think that those types of things are important for us to do because, first of all, it's not that God can't forgive even if we forget to confess. It's just that if we confess and by naming it, it means that we're asking God to help us overcome it and not do it again. It's that by not admitting that we have any sin, we are rejecting God's mercy and God's forgiveness, but by opening ourselves up to the possibility that what has happened may have been our fault. We are inviting God's love and grace to flow in us, and we're also inviting the strength that he gives so that we won't repeat what we have done in the past. And I think that is why number three, not only is number three a charm, but I think that's why confession is good for the soul. So, Congregation may stand as we sing the next hymn. It's as easy as one, two, three. Please join me in stating the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For us, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in concordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of wholeness, we pray for believers all over the globe. Unify us in service of the gospel, that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the cosmos, we pray for creation, the gardens, waterways, and creatures near to us, and diverse forms of life that remain unseen. Teach us to treat the natural world with reverence. Lord, in your mercy. God of all people, we pray for harmony among the nations. Cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear, that we may work in solidarity with one another for the common good. Lord, in your mercy. God of abundance, we pray for those who are oppressed or are in any need. Encourage those who have begun to lose heart. Strengthen and renew us with your spirit, especially Susan Clokey. Lord, in your mercy. And God of righteousness, we pray for this holy house of worship. Set our gaze upon things eternal, that in thanksgiving for your mercy, we may extend grace to more and more people. Lord, in your mercy. And God of the ages, in your goodness, you have sent us faithful witnesses for every time and place. We give you thanks for those saints who now rest in your eternal mercy, especially Bill Berg. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. We will now receive the offering.
Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all, saying, Take and drink. This is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread or drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray as Christ has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Please follow the instruction of the ushers.
congregation may rise. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The closing hymn is number 543. Peace and serve the Lord. <laughs>